Hi, I'm Daniel Liang. Thank you for joining us. In this video, we begin to introduce chapter two. The focus of this chapter is on learning elementary programming techniques to solve problems. In the first chapter, you learned how to create, compile, and run very simple Java programs. Now you will learn how to solve problems by writing programs. Through these problems, you will learn elementary programming using primitive data types, variables, constants, operators, expressions, and input and output. Suppose, for example, you need to take out a student loan. Given the loan amount, loan term, and annual interest rate, can you write a program to compute the monthly payment and total payment? This chapter shows you how to write programs like this. Along the way, you will learn the basic steps that uh, go into analyzing a problem, designing a solution, and implementing the solution by creating a program. Let's first consider the simple problem of computing area of a circle. How do you write a program for solving this problem? Writing a program involves designing algorithms and translating algorithms into programming instructions. An algorithm lists the steps you can follow to solve a problem. Algorithms can help the programmer plan a program before writing it in a programming language. Algorithm can be described in natural language or pseudocode. Pseudocode is natural language mixed with some programming code. The algorithm for computing the area of a circle can be described as follows. First, we read the circle's radius, and then we compute the area using the following formula. Area is radius times radius times pi. Finally, we can display the result. When you code, you translate an algorithm into a program. You already know that every Java program begins with a class definition in which the keyword class is followed by the class name. Assume that we choose the class name is computer area. Let's create this class now. Please remember, don't put anything in the package field. Click finish. We now create the outline of this class and we'll write all the details later. 
as you know, every Java program must have a main method. Well, the program execution begins. So let's write this main method. So these are the steps, read in radius, compute area, step three, display the area. So these are these three steps here. The program needs to read the radios entered by the user from the keyboard. This raises two important issues. Reading the radios, storing the radios in the program. Let's address the second issue first. In order to store the radius, the program needs to declare a symbol called a variable. A variable represents a value stored in the computer's memory. Rather than using X and Y as variable names, choose descriptive names. In this case, we're gonna call this is radius and let's assign a fixed value. Two point one, for example. To let the compiler know what radius is, you need to specify their data type. whether this is integer, a real number, or something else. This is known as declaring variables. Java provides simple data types for representing integers, real numbers, characters, Boolean types. These types are known as primitive data types. And here we are going to give this real number, real number in Java, we're gonna use double. It is a floating point number. It's a double precision floating point number. And we'll talk about this more in the future. So now we declared a variable radius with initial value 2.1. And we also need variable area. We're gonna declare the area. And now we're gonna compute area is radius times radius times pi is 3.1415. After this, we can implement step three to display the output and we can now have this string is uh, uh, the area is and we can use this operator plus to concatenate a string with a number and the number is automatic converted into a string and it concatenate with the string. So the result is a string. And now we can run this program. And the result is displayed right here.
In this program, the input value for radius is fixed. In the next video, we'll introduce how to get the input value from the keyboard. Thank you for watching this video. See you on the next video.